Come here. Wait, Kai, wait, gentle. Wait, 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 wait. This is the variety I got from uh, a friend that says so delicious, but it's the smaller one. So we'll harvest a few and then uh, and then we'll replant the rest, you know.
culture. See one of them. Mmm. Okay. Mm. You see one problem. Fresh, so it tastes really good. It's not sour yet. Like a week from now, it'll be that sour point flavor. But I mean, it should be a whole lot smoother. I would have pounded it for hours, but I mean, it's bedtime for a fox. So. It is. It's... Really smooth, traditional poi falls to the wayside for bedtime. <laughs> what do you think? You want to touch? <laughs> <laughs> so tired. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Just want fun. Say, Jen. That tastes really good. A lot better than what I was expecting. Homegrown kala there. Yeah. It's really good. Thank you.
子要树。哎，这个是我们的花园，这是这是你的花园。哎，可以。这个名字是 Moringa， 嘿，大哥 ，Moringa， 你的花园，喜欢了吗？哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈哈Which one do you think? A good straight one. Good thick straight one like that one. That's nice. It's faded one. This one here. Yeah, does that feel like it's um still pretty strong? 
Fox. Are you looking at your coconut tree? 
that your coconut tree? So what's cool about this coconut tree and the four behind me in that row is we actually took my placenta, chopped it up into five pieces and planted it with these five dwarf coconuts. So do you feel the power and the connection you two have? Yeah. <laughs> you wanna touch all of them? Go to the next one. Say hello to all of them. Say hello, plant. Thank you for growing. Uh, thank you for growing and being strong. Oh. Okay, next one. Last one. Here we go. And they're doing so well. They are really adapting well to this spot that we chose for them about a year ago. Yeah. A good angle of them. What do you think? Your coconut trees. the pineapple that my dad actually planted um, a year ago. Um, so Jake just put a fresh layer of wood chips around them and they're just doing great. So hopefully by next year we have some fresh pineapple. Yay, pineapple. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh. Fox, la la la. Very quickly after this moment, we had to abandon Moe Uhane, our bug out property, and return to Komorebi. As a project we have had cooking behind the scenes for a few years, is finally ready to begin and complete. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Yeah, he said it. In 2019, Nicole and I finished our 30-foot diameter yurt and in doing so, established financial independence from monthly rent and mortgage debt. Our yurt was a low-cost structure with a very low earthly footprint, and we have now turned the yurt, which is basically a large studio apartment, into a warm and safe home. In 2021, when Nicole became pregnant, we started talking about having a more permanent home as so-called yurt life seemed not to be ideal for a new family with babies roaming around and privacy that yurts do not provide. In the Sonoran Desert of Arizona, where Nicole and I met, my secret dream was to build a Cobb Earthship home, incorporating raw natural building materials like clay, stone, sand, straw, and glass into a home that used the sun, the land, and attached greenhouse for natural cooling, heating, and water usage. In 2020, I discovered another abundant natural resource that in the USA and Canada is in abundant supply and treated like garbage by society at large, the shipping cargo container. Bye. By some estimates, there are close to 20 million shipping containers worldwide and only 6 million in use for transport. This leaves 10 to 15 million metal containers just sitting around occupying huge swaths of land and going to waste even though their metal is 100% reusable. We were inspired by the prospect of using clean, used shipping cargo containers as the outer shell of a permanent home for our family and turning the yurt into a guest home for visiting family and friends. We teamed up with Victoria Shipping Containers for a dream of turning six of these 40-foot cargo containers into a home at Komorebi. This spring, we will finally begin and complete this project and before returning to Komorebi, we stopped by Victoria Shipping Containers HQ to finally see all six containers in one place and begin cutting them up and reinforcing them for the journey to our off-grid property.
Well, they work on this shipping containers. Fox and I are just over here hanging out because it's really loud and dangerous, huh? So we're watching from afar, trying to stay warm. It's cold. <laughs> are you waving it to people? Yeah? What do you think of your new house? Yeah? Looking good back there. Yeah! And so you're doing this because... Because they want to be able to use this door just in case yeah. they want to get a big desk in or out or piece but, of furniture. But then what's this doing for them? Well, that's so you can put drywall or you can put anything right. on there. Yeah. To love it, love it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, living room. Can you yeah. see it now? Yeah. For the past year and a half, all Nicole has said is, I just don't see this ever happening. We're gonna always live in a yurt and have nothing else besides that. So do you see it happening now? I do, yes. I do. I'm very excited. So here we're standing in the living room, part of the living room, and then that's part of the kitchen, like one half of the kitchen. And then this container here is gonna be bathroom. I think just like a big open uh, dining room area. Let's go. He's almost running. Come on, Fox, come on. Down. So they put the temporary supports in there, keep the structural integrity, and then we'll knock those out when they arrive. Cool. Yay. And then there's some serious H-beams that we're going to repurpose. Yeah. So those H-beams back there, Sean. Yeah, those are just like one of our, like, the things we found. We're constantly watching like, Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji and stuff for I, the, the keywords just steal anything. And you're always looking for stuff that's repurposed, reclaimed. Yeah, like those H-beams, they came from some kind of industrial warehouse that was getting torn down and they just cut them out and they were sitting there and I think we got them for a couple hundred bucks and they're worth way more than that, but we, we, we can use them for your project and uh, 
they're, they're perfect. They're like overkill. Yeah, they're, they're insanely overkill. They're but, right from like a massive structure uh, to support tens of thousands of pounds. Why do you like doing that kind of stuff? Uh, you're, you're, you're doing it with these containers. There's multiple things that motivate me. Part, part of it is that you save money. Uh, that's a big part of it. You're saving money, and, and then you also get to find things that instead of going and buying a new year's recycling it instead of it heading onto a landfill. Yeah. Uh, with containers and stuff, I just think it's such a cool product to build out of because you're taking something that is being used for one purpose, and then you get to repurpose it for something else, and it's nearly indestructible. These things are designed mm. to be used to ship stuff for 25 years on the open seas, so they 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 can take like the salt, the the rain, the snow, everything. And then we're going to use them and put them in a standstill position where they'll last forever. You're using them as a kiln for firewood drying for a yeah. long time. Yeah, that's like so. The, that, that's what got us into this whole industry was we own this little mill out on the other side of the of, of Victoria and Machosa, and we 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 had this idea where or Phil had this idea where he wanted to build kilns that could run off the of firewood byproduct. So it's like all the slash piles that come from firewood. And mm. so you use the, the the byproduct to heat the kiln by heating the boiler. The boiler heats the water. The water Hot water gets just gets put into these fans. The fans uh, distribute that energy into the, the kilns, and so that's what led us to shipping containers. We're like, well, what are we going to? What, what housing are we going to use to, to to hold all this? So then you're using the wood to then dry out more wood. You're using the wood to dry more wood. Wow. And it needs no no gasoline at all. Mm. Um, it, the only thing it needs is electricity, which you can generate either through solar panel, a uh, solar power, or just connect into your local grid. And, Wow. And that's what we did. And, and how about now? What are you turning these into most often? Uh, a lot of offices, uh, but we've also created like first aid units during COVID. Uh, we, we build a lot of um, kind of emergency preparedness units for uh, places that are remote, especially a lot of First Nations in BC. Mm. Uh, they, they'll be out in the middle of nowhere and, and it just gives them the opportunity to store enough food for a year or two, uh, water, things like that. Mm. Um, it's not going to go bad. It's, too, it's extremely dry, and, and, and yeah, that's probably the majority of what we build out of these. We mm. built the occasional little cabin or office for people's houses. We built a yoga studio, which was really cool. Whoa! Um, yeah, a lot of twenty foot containers turn into offices, though. It's, it's the biggest one. The other thing I should have mentioned about getting old steel and stuff is that when you buy old stuff from, from factories or warehouses being torn down, it's just built better. It, it, we don't make things like we used to. It's like that old saying your grandpa says, they don't make them like they used to, like these doors. They're, and they're you find so that old. they're all better quality when they're, when they're older. Way better quality. Because they're, they're built to last a long time. It's not like a five-year door or whatever. It's a forever door. Yeah. The other really thing about building with a shipping container is that we're, we're, we're essentially framing a house right now. And if we were going to do that out of lumber, by the time we were done, there would be a pile of, of rubble and, and, and lumber and, and whatever products just to get the mountain trash. Yeah, just trash because it's just all going to landfill and it's not recyclable. Anything that's left over from here, you can see over here, even the metal pieces that we're left with, you're going to pack those with the containers so I can use them for other projects. Exactly. It's even like a small little odd other end, it's fully recyclable. At, at the very worst case scenario, it's gonna get recycled. Yeah, yeah. Like all this stuff behind. Yeah, all those panels, they're all good for really cool stuff like building awnings, building walls, building anything you really want. It's yeah. just every little bit gets used. Right. Part of the issue with these guys is that we're doing it at your facility here at Victoria Shipping Containers. Yeah. And then we're gonna ship it to our remote location. So yeah. A lot of these supports are just temporary for the shipping process, yeah. which are also reused. Oh, totally. You can absolutely, it's just like square tubing that you can use 
for whatever project you want in the future. Uh, it actually could be really useful for you. You're talking about building awnings off the end. Yeah. Uh, those features will be fantastic for that when you get to that point. Cool, cool. Yeah. We now return to Komorebi as a snowstorm hits us and prepare the new site and foundation and mill the wood for framing for our shipping container Earthship home. We hope you join us for the journey.